Today I want to show you how to forecast the demand for new products, where no historical sales information about the new product exists. This video is intended for people slightly familiar with the issues of new product forecasts and only explains the general procedure that can be adapted to different retailers. This approach was adopted at an international retailer for its seasonal new product demand forecast. This unique approach combines the principles of machine learning and economical product market diffusion. At first, let me explain the economic model that we will use as a base for our machine learning approach. The base model or base diffusion model consists of a simple differential equation that describes the process of how new products get adopted in a population. The base model has been widely used in forecasting, especially new product sales forecasting. For people not familiar with the matter, a curve of a product sales can be fitted based on the three parameters, P, Q, and MM represents the total demand volume, where P and Q are parameters that define the curve behavior over a seasonal life cycle. If we can retrieve the parameters, we can plot a forecast curve for new products. So our main goal will be not to forecast single sales and instead predict the total demand volume of the new product as well as find the P and Q parameters that define the curve shape. The challenge lies in the non-existing information about past sales of new products. What we have as a retailer is the product information about new and historical products, as well as the sales history of the historical products. Let's take a look at the approach that has been chosen, we have a past sales record of old products. This record can help us to find similar old products for our new products. In the first step, we want to find similarities in the specific features of old products and their total sales volume. This was done with the HDBSCAN cluster algorithm, where we assign the old products to a similarity cluster. The old product information was then used to train a model for the classification of the similarity cluster. To find now the P and Q parameter of the new product following was done, initially, it was defined how many different base diffusion shapes we allow, this will be called the base cluster. Then we fitted the old product sales in a curve and clustered them into similar base clusters. This gave a cluster assignment to each old product. A classification model was trained on the old product for the base cluster and applied to the new products. This gave us the P and Q parameter for the new product. In the last step, a regression model was trained on the old product and to predict the total sales volume of the new product. The features of the previous classification of the product similarity and the diffusion cluster were used in this train and prediction step. While this approach only illustrates the main components for the prediction, where in the regression model step for total sales prediction, a two-level ensemble model used with four prediction models, consisting of SVM, GLMs, and neural networks. Now the important step of the used features. We had four central clustering, classification, and regression components. For the similarity clustering, the product lifecycle was used as well as the retail price and average IR. Other features can be used that might be a deciding factor for similarity. The clustering was done over the total sales volume of each past product. In the second component for the cluster classification of the products, the fiscal year and month and the start month of the life cycle was used, as well as features that describe the products, like color, brand, product group, product subgroup. The third component for the classification of the base curve cluster had the same features as in the similarity classification where used plus the similarity cluster of the classification before. In the total sales prediction, the feature stayed the same to the classification step before, except with the two cluster classifications of the similarity and base curve classification. This is a very generalized feature build, where other available features like marketing efforts or expert opinions can be used to improve the models. The main challenge in this model pipeline is to find similarity features of old to new products. The following main conclusion gave this project. The prediction for the total demand had an accuracy of 88%, as well as a MAPE of 37%. The dataset is not publicly available, which makes the resulting metrics hard for you to evaluate. This approach competed against other new product demand prediction approaches, where it achieved the highest predictive accuracy and was chosen by the customer. The customer-based post-expert analyses showed that significant errors were backtracked to old products in the evaluation set that suffered on problems with the supply chain or other influential factors, which led to an unexpected past sales behavior. Improvements can be made to analyze and cleanse the training set of old products that were impacted by unexpected events. While this solution offers a good prediction model for new products at launch, unexpected events or changes are not considered. 
Based on oncoming new product sales, the base curve can be reclassified, and total demand re-evaluated to fit on actual sales behaviors in the market. To be at a point of sharing this video with you, has a history of others sharing their Conwell with me. Be a part of this life cycle. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like or share your feedback and thoughts in the comments. Let's stay together curious. Thank you for watching.